to uphold the firing. In the age of space shuttles and electric electronic jets, it's often forgotten. In the beginning, aviators had to fly literally by the seat of their pants. And a reminder of those times sits right in our own backyard. And that's where Newswatch 8's pilot reporter Judd Chapins joins us now to explain. Judd? Wes, Marissa, she's called a tiger moth. And you're about to meet the man who flies her. He may have been born 60 years too late, but in some ways, right on time. Switches on. Switches are on. Contact, here we go. Should go. Contact. Pat O'Flynn is off once more in the wild blue yonder to experience something he thinks is lost and long forgotten. O'Flynn is a transplanted Canadian, makes his home in Tampa, and this is his baby, a 1941 de Havilland Tiger Moth, a Canadian-made trainer for a thousands first tasted flight. It is one of a handful of flying in the States, and O'Flynn's passion. Today's world, it's pretty septic and boring and doesn't have the excitement like the old days and I thought I'd buy this airplane to bring some of that back because this is what got me out to the airports when I was a little kid was the excitement and adventure of flying. These two men with wings alone in the sky. The Tiger Moth was a trainer designed to teach basic flying skills to World War II era pilots from Britain and the Commonwealth countries. Skills some think are lost on today's generation of flyers. It trained thousands of uh, young men like myself and younger uh, during the Second World War and uh, who went out and paid the ultimate sacrifice. All the great aces, all the great and brave bomber pilots all learned to fly in Tiger Moths. The men who flew the early airplanes truly were brave. And, uh, look, I don't think at the time they realized how dangerous it was knowing what we know now. Flying this thing, you have to fly it from when you start it up to when you you shut it down, you know. You've got to fly it constantly. This airplane's taught me to fly all over again. It's the way it used to be. The sentimental kinship with aviators of the 30s and 40s comes alive when you slip the surly bonds of Earth and make your way aloft. But Pat holds another emotion as well. I lost my mother to cancer in December. She never would fly with me. She was always, she was one of those people who uh, was terrified of flying, and uh, I could never convince her to go up. So I thought it would be fitting to put her name on this airplane, so every time I fly, she'll be going with me. Wes, Marissa, it's the preservations of planes like this that let us continue to live the past and see what our ancestors and our predecessors have done. Yeah. See, Judd, this isn't even fair. This isn't an assignment. This isn't work. You just had a great time today, let's face it. Wes, flying this airplane was probably the neatest experience I've ever had. Oh, it's, wow. it's unbelievable what it feels like to to go back to what the basics are and just fly. Without radios, without all the confusion, it's, it's just unbelievable. Now you made it fun right. for us too and we appreciate yeah. it. Thanks, Thank Judd. you, Judd. Well, you might know how to hunker down at home during a